everyone. This is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. Today, you're learning how to frame a wall the easy way. Now, I can say that because I've done this project so many times in the past that I've come up with a foolproof method of attaching an interior wall, which is non-load bearing, in an existing space. Now, you could do this with just very basic materials and very basic tools. And the great thing about this wall in particular, it's going to have a zigzag to it. So you're going to learn how to construct an outside corner, how to construct an inside corner, how to attach the wall to an odd angle wall, and how to attach a wall to a wall straight on. You're also going to learn how to install a door and a method of attachment for the ceiling and the floor that's so simple. It's going to make this project go by so quickly, even if you've never built anything before in your life. So I always start out with a quick sketch of the space. And you can see here, I'm putting in this partition. So what I'm constructing actually is a hallway into the bath, a little area here for a wine rack because I've got a bar area over here to the left. And then here's a doorway going into an enlarged workshop and some storage space. So this is gonna be a much better use of this space right here ahead of us. I've laid out masking tape on top of the carpet. This is where the carpeting is going to be cut so that we can maintain the carpeting in that hallway. The carpet pad and tack board need to come out. I have a pair of needle nose pliers here. I'm starting in a corner. I'm just going to grab onto the loops of the carpet and start pulling it up. Now that the tack strip has been removed for the carpeting, that's the little edge pieces that stick up and hold the carpeting in place. They were all glued down along the edges, so I have a pallet knife like you'd find in your drywall department of your big box store. And I'm just going to go ahead and take the pallet knife and scrape off any residual glue that happens to be along the edges. So the most important thing about constructing any new wall is to make sure that the wall is square. Now what that really means is that you're making sure that your first angle is a 90 degree angle to the existing surface. So here's my existing surface here. I'm going to be using a carpenter's square to accomplish this. I'll line one end of the carpenter's square up against the existing surface, making sure that it's nice and flat along that surface. Now that I have that done, I can lay the next piece on the floor and then I can trace along that floor making sure that I have a nice clean mark and then I could take that all the way to my first inside corner. Once I do that I can line it up along that line and then I can trace out my very next wall right along this edge and make sure everything is nice and square. Now that the new hallway wall is nice and parallel to my existing wall, I'd like to make sure that my next wall is going to be in line with the wall that runs in this direction. So the way that I'm going to do that is the same way. I'm using my carpenter square. I'm going to line it up perfectly flat along the existing surface. And you'll notice I have it lined up exactly with the corner of the wall. I've made a mark on the floor where that needs to be, but that's not where the wall is going to be. That's where the drywall needs to end. So the wall has to be located a half inch in from that point. So I've made another mark a half an inch in. Once I do that, I can go ahead, I can line this up against the baseboard, and I can make that line going all the way across until it reaches the other side, and making sure that everything is going to be nice and perfectly aligned. Now when I get to the other side, I can make sure that that's nice and aligned, and it is. So what I'm going to do here at this point is I've located the very center of the door, and then I've measured over to one side on the right hand side and another on the left hand side. This is 37 and three quarter rough opening to pop a door in that space. So I'm gonna keep that clear and make sure that I just go ahead and put the bottom plates of each wall right up to this line on either side. So traditionally you'd construct an entire wall out of wood. But in my case, I'm using a combination of two by four material and I'm using metal channeling. Now metal channeling is a really great material. It's really thin. You do need gloves to handle it because it's really sharp. But the great thing about it is a piece of two by four fits directly inside of this channel and becomes really nice and secure. And the reason why I'm using metal in this case is because I'm going over concrete. I don't want to have to use a pressure treated material. Pressure treated wood, it, cutting it indoors is not a good idea. And this time of year, it's a little too cold to go out inside and cut it. But beyond that, this metal channeling makes 
makes the process so much faster. You could just go in succession one after the other after the channel is on the floor. And it also prevents moisture weeping up through that concrete and into your wood, creating mold issues or moisture issues. So this is a really great option for you to construct a wall very, very quickly and really the right way. I'm getting ready to cut the metal channel. I've made a mark on the back side of the channel. So that's the side that I'm working off of. And I'm just going to go ahead and take that carpenter's angle and make a nice straight line here. And then I'm just going to take a pair of tin snips. Now that's what I'm using here. So we're just going to go ahead and cut directly into this. And in order to cut this angle, I'm just measuring up three and five eighths. I'll go ahead and cut that. The orange fasteners that you see here have been driven into the concrete using a powder actuated nailer. That means real bullets, folks. So let me show you how to do it. I'll take the nail with the nail head facing out, press it into the hole in the bottom, making sure that it's well seated. Once that's done, then I'll take the bullet, I'll place it right inside this little hole right here with the tip facing down, and then I'll take it and place it on a spot. Now I really need to make sure this is nice and plumb, and I'm just gonna grab it really hard, making sure it's pressing down onto the floor, and then I'll take a nice heavy hammer and swing it. Just like that, nice and secure. Might take a couple times, but that was really fun. And incidentally, in order to get that bullet out of that spot, you just pull on it and it pops out. Now that the track is complete on the floor, I'm working on getting the track installed on the ceiling. And you'll see here, I have three different pieces of two by four cut to the exact length from floor to ceiling where I want to install it. Now, I have also cut a piece of the metal track and the metal track is actually the mirror image of the track that's on the floor. And this one's going to be going in this direction where it's facing down and it can accept the two by fours within the track. But the thing is, what I need to do here is I need to measure these out at 16 inches on center. Now 16 inches on center really just means that the very center of every 2x4 is going to be 16 inches apart from one another. That's all it means. So why is 16 inches on center really an industry standard? It's really because all of your 4x8 sheets of drywall need to be secured at that specific location in order for that to be nice and secure on the wall. So every 16 inches you need to put a screw into the 2x4 through the drywall. You also need to have both edges secured so even though it's 16 inches on center you, when you get to a corner you might have something that might only be four inches apart so you might have two two by fours really close together and you really need to make sure that your corners have a two by four behind it something solid because when you go ahead and finish that with joint compound you're going to be putting pressure on it and moving it around and you can cause that to crack if the ends are kind of left out flapping so it's exactly what I'm doing here I have three two by fours in a course of, I don't know, 36 inches. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and show you what we're going to do on this angled wall as well because we can't put a two by four unless we have a table saw that we're gonna be cutting at a different angle. I'm gonna give you a really easy way to do this without a table saw. So when you get to your ceiling, in order to locate where you're going to be putting the channel on the ceiling, you need to locate all of the joists. Now your joists could be running in one direction or the other. And the way that you're going to find this is with a stud finder. Now my stud finder is really great. It works really well on metal or wood. So depending on what you have for your construction, sometimes in basements people use all metal studs. So you can actually flip this one to metal or wood and I'll show you exactly how it works. So you're just going to take it, you're going to drag it over the course of your ceiling and there's one joist here and then I'll keep going and it'll beep every single time it hits a joist. Ultimately I have three locations here four joists, they run in this direction, and so I know that when I put my track up, I can screw here, here, and here, and get it nice and secure to the ceiling. So I've got my metal track all cut. I'm going to lay it right up here on top of the marks that I just made on the ceiling. And we're going to go ahead and take a two by four, and we're gonna slide it into this track. Now I've pre-marked all of my, my two by four locations, 16 inches on center, on the floor. And we're just gonna slide this in here and get this aligned a little bit. And then I'll go ahead and take a nice long level and make sure that this 
is plumb in each direction. So we're moving this left to right, making sure that this is gonna be exactly in the right spot. Do you have it lined up on the floor there? So I've got it in one direction and you have to check it in both directions in order to make sure that this is perfect. So then I'm just gonna go ahead and do the same exact thing here, making sure that this is nice and plumb. And we'll just go ahead and zip into those marks that we made on the ceiling and it'll be nice and secure. And this is what it looks like when you attach the two by fours to the metal track on the top. I've double checked for plumb and I'm using one and a quarter inch drywall screws. That's all you need to get this to be nice and secure. And it is going to take a little bit of pressure to get it through the metal and into the wood, but that's all you need to secure this in place. And these do need to be secured from front and back. So you'll do the exact same thing on the other side. Well, that is really secure. It's not going anywhere. So if you remember, I don't own a table saw and that gives me the ability to rip an entire length of two by four at the correct angle to meet up with this angled wall. So what I'm doing now is I'm just cutting out small pieces of two by four and I'm cutting them at the correct angle. So this is a great way to measure for an angle. So this is a sliding bevel. This is a really great tool to have. And the great thing about it is you can put it up against any surface and you can get the correct angle of that surface. So all the way that this works, it's it just tightens with this little screw cap here. And I'm just going to set it in the angle, nice and tight, and then I'll go ahead and tighten that screw. So this is the correct angle, and this actually turns out to be a 40 degree angle. So I could take this over to my miter saw, set my miter saw at 40 degrees, and I have all of these cut at the exact angle that I need. And I'm doing this on end, so I've got this nice and aligned along this bottom edge here. And I'm just simply going to transfer this just to double check that it's a 40 degree angle. That's how I came up with that. And when I bring the blade down, I'm setting it in my saw like this, and the saw can come down and cut straight through this board. So now that the angle is cut, this is going against the wall like this. I'm going to go ahead and drill a couple of pilot holes into this two by four material. Close to the angled edge, straight in. And then here, I'm lining it up with this plumb line that goes between the metal track on the top and the metal track on the floor, lining up this angled edge right with the line. And then I'm going to go into the hole that I just drilled straight on and then move it as I go at an angle so I can catch that two by four that's behind the drywall. So I've started my two and a half inch screws and I'm just going to line that up and drill it in. Now with the second metal track that we're installing on the ceiling, I went ahead and cut out some notches in this metal track. So one is a straight on and another is at a 45 so I can bend it according to how this is going to go. So you see when it gets installed, it's one continuous piece and it's going to make installation a lot easier that way. So before I reveal the long wall to you, I just wanted to show you this inside corner. And so you can see going all the way from the floor to the ceiling, we have a nice, backer for our four by eight sheet of drywall. So on the left hand side and the right hand side, you're gonna have nice support backing. You can screw directly into it and there's the ceiling and there's a jog in the ceiling. And it turned out so nice. And there's our newly formed hallway. All the two by fours are lined up just like soldiers and that's a beautiful wall. And so let's get going with the other section where we're going to be putting the door and I'll show you how we finish an outside corner. So one two by four actually forms a backing for two pieces of drywall. So one piece of drywall is going to get attached to this side. Another piece of drywall is going to get attached to this side. And it's enough backing, it's really strong to hold both pieces. So that's all you really need to do an outside corner, just one two by four. Now the next channel that we put in, we put in exactly the same way as the last wall. And the great thing about it is you can go ahead and cut out all your angles or just cut a nice slit and really conform around any configuration that you might have on your ceiling. The only problem with it really is that we have no two by four behind this long length on the end and I decided to leave it all in one piece. And I, what I've done here is I've glued it in place. It's going to be nice and secure as soon as it dries. I'll put a two by four in that channel and glue that two by four in as well. And this wall will be so nice and secure to accommodate a door. It'll be nice and strong. I've drawn a plumb line here. I'm just going to stay within the confines of that and I'll take some construction adhesive. Now this one 
is really great. This one actually dries very quickly. There's low fumes to it and it's going to hold really, really well. So I'm just putting, you know, just small beads all the way down this area and then I'll pop the two by four right in that channel all the way down to the floor. Now I've cut to length the two two by fours that are full length from the floor to the ceiling area. And the way that I've located them, I've cut a little bit of two by four and I've put one piece on one side just to make sure that this is in the exact space it's supposed to be in so that we get the full width for the door. So now that we've done that, we can go ahead and we can cut these two two by fours. We're doubling them up to make it nice and strong for this heavy wood door. You need to double up on either side of any door opening for the same reason because you're gonna have that swing and the door is gonna be slamming. You really need to beef up both sides of the entryway. So we dry fitted the finished door frame in the opening and it fits perfectly. But I just wanted to show you, even though we didn't secure anything directly above the door, we just have this metal framing in place. We've secured it on both corners and into each side. So this side has been glued. This side is nice and secure with double two by fours on either side side, three inch screws going through each of them, secure it really well. So now I can show you, go ahead and do a pull up, not moving at all, trying to move it around. This thing is so strong, that's how you build door frames. Now when you hang a door frame, you're going to use something called shims. So shims are just made out of cedar and basically they're just tapered pieces of wood. What it allows you to do is it allows you to put a door frame in place and then actually nail through the shim system to get this nice and level because sometimes you can't get it quite level, that your floor might be a little off. So the way that they work is you're going to use two opposite ends. So the larger ends are at the top and at the bottom here. I'm just going to insert the smaller ends into this space between the finish frame and the two by fours. Plumb the frame with a level, making sure that it's perfectly centered front to back in the door opening and then nail it in place with two and a half inch finish nails. So the last thing I'd like to mention before I completely wrap up this project is the addition of two short pieces of two by four on either side of the door. So it's going to further secure this door in place and it won't rattle if you happen to slam it. The other thing is it's acting as a little area here where I can actually attach an electrical box for a switch for the lighting in this room. And if you happen to have a two by four that has a giant warp in it, it's a really great way to actually correct that and make that two by four nice and plumb. So this is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. If you enjoyed watching this project, please share it with your friends, subscribe, like, and follow, and I can keep bringing you these great projects in the future. And you know what? This was an easy project for you, so I hope you find a use for it in your own home. This is Renee Romeo of ReneeRomeo.com. Thank you so much for watching.